good morning and jai hind dear children welcome back to my english class so um as promised before that i would be sharing a special video on uh, the the poetic devices which are used in this poem so today um i'll be sharing the you know innumerable number of poetic devices which i came across uh, while going through this beautiful poem written by robert frost so uh, the very first thing which i wish to tell you is first let me share something which i came across and you know um, i have just tried to keep it very safe and secure i just want to share okay let me see where is that gone um it seems that it's not here well uh, in that case i think it will be better that i read it out to you all of you um yeah i have found it okay so uh, you all may you know jot down whatever i have written here so uh, this is a long narrative poem written in one stanza with no break it is an example of a blank verse that means it means that it has no rhyming scheme but it has regular meters okay there is a repetition of the line good fences make good neighbors all right it has uh, given a musical effect to the poem then uh, you can also call it to be an example of refrain okay so this is something very important which you can just jot down or maybe uh, click a photograph whatever suits you now i will start with the um that is i'll start with the poetic devices that is very important so let me share that although this is just a uh, few okay now uh, this is just few this is just maybe tip of the iceberg all right so uh, let me start so in this uh, screen sharing you are able to see only few that assonance is on line number 9 10 so it's uh, you can write that consonants is on line number 14 yeah then enjambment is the last two lines then metaphor there are two to three examples then there are uh, visual imagery line number 17 and 24 then symbolism has been used for the word fence which is denoting a gap so this is just a drop in the ocean now i'll tell you where are uh, where do we find exactly these and what do they mean okay the very first line that is something there is that uh, doesn't love a wall that is an example of alliteration okay children that is an example of alliteration so now uh, i'll just show you the poem maybe so that you know it is uh, easier for you to decipher okay where is the poem i think this is the poem all right so the first line that is there is there is the repetition of the sound the 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 so that is the reason why it is an example of alliteration okay so line number 1 is alliteration now let's come down let's come down to uh 4 5 6 7 let's come down to 7 that is 1 2 3 4 5 so yeah this one 
where they have left not one stone on a stone. So this is an example of assonance. Then come down to line number nine and ten to please the yelping dogs. The gaps I mean, no one has seen them made or heard them made. So this is yet again an example of assonance. Now, what do you mean by the word assonance? So uh, you may write it down or you may just, you know, pay attention, listen to it. Assonance is repetition of a vowel sound in the same line, okay? Vowel sound in the same line as in uh, you have it in line number 9 and 10, I believe. This, no one has seen them made or heard. To please the yelping dogs, the gaps I mean, no one has seen them made or heard them made. There is that a uh sound. Okay. In made, heard. All right. And in seven you have where they left not one stone on a stone. So you have this uh, uh sounds. O sound rather I would say. Stone. O. Again on a. So these are you know repetition of the vowel sound. O, a, o, a. Okay. So that is assonance. Then let's come down to line number 13. That is and on a day we meet to walk the line. This is an example of metaphor. Walk the line. That means here we are talking about the stretch of the boundary. Okay. The, that means the length of the boundary. How far it is. Alright. Now uh, when I come to line number 14. Now let me tell you which is 14. Line number 14 is and set the wall between us once again. So this is an example of consonants. Now consonants is the repetition of the consonant sound. Okay. That is the n sound and the t sound in line number 14. That is the sound of t in set. The wall between t once again. This is a you know the sound of n here between n again here. So that is an example of their consonants. Now there is yet again an example of metaphor that is on line number 15. That is we keep the wall between us as we go. Okay. So the wall between us as we go is you know talking about the difference. Now uh, line number 16 this is just you know for your understanding I would say. I won't let you all go deep into it. This is called parallelism. Parallelism. P-A-R-A-L-L-I-S-M Parallelism means when I'm starting the sentence with words with which I'm ending also. Like this sentence I'm starting with two each and you can see that I'm ending the sentence with two each only. So this is called parallelism. Alright. Now let's move on to line number 17. Just after that. Where is that gone? Uh, it is. Yeah, this one. And some are loaves and some so nearly balls. This is an uh, example of two things. You can call it to be a metaphor because loaves here, they indicate the stones. Okay, where is it gone? Yeah, this one. And it can be also an example of visual imagery. All right. Now let's come down to the next one that is we have to use a spell to make them balance. Now spell is what? Can you use any sort of say magic to balance the boulders you know to be in the same level? Can we do that? Is it practical? No, I don't think so. It 
seems to be more of an exaggeration. All right. So when I'm talking about exaggeration, so that is nothing but hyperbole or hyperbole, whatever you call, it, whatever you pronounce it as. Okay. So that is hyperbole. Uh, now let's come down to uh, this one. This is line number, I would say, 24. He is all pine and I am apple orchard. Now this is an example of visual imagery. Okay. This is an example of visual imagery. Oh, I think I have forgotten one. That is personification. Personification was here. Stay where you are until our backs are turned. Okay, this is an example of personification wherein the pronoun you is actually talking about the stones. As if, you know, I'm talking to the stone and I'm saying that, you know, you stay wherever you are until we come back. Okay, so that means it's uh, kind of, you know, telling someone that you need to stay there until we come back again. All right. So that is an uh, example of personification and it is on line number 19. Then as I told you, uh, he is all pine and I am orchard, apple orchard. That is line number 24. It is an example of visual imagery. Then again, there is an example of personification that is my apple trees will never get across, you know. I'm saying as if, you know, uh, like don't worry. My trees, they will never breach into, they will not cross your boundaries. Something like that, you know. Now let's come down to symbolic. Now what is symbolic? Symbolic is um, words which can be used to symbolize some particular uh, aspect okay so here the main thing that is being always you know talked about that is the fences okay now fences here it's uh, it's very symbolic because uh, by the word fences we tend to understand the gap okay the difference all right and that is being created by the making of the wall okay so here Fences is used as a symbolic, which is uh, symbolizing the wall. All right. Wall, that means the gap. Gap between the two, uh, the two people, the two neighbors. The gap between the relationship. Okay. Now, let's come down to this line. Why do they make good neighbors, isn't it? Where there are cows. Now, this is an example of rhetorical question. Remember, we discussed this uh, quite a long time back in, I believe, in one of the poems. Okay, so rhetorical questions are, in fact, those questions wherein you actually don't have any particular answer to provide with. Okay, and uh, at the same time, they... Um, they, you know, they try to point out something very important. All right. So here, uh, here you have this rhetorical question on li in line number 30 and 31. Now, when I come down to line number 33, that is what I was walling in and walling out. This is an example of alliteration that is a repetition of the sound ber here okay now mm, let's come down to this word offense on line number 34 now opet's word is used as a pun how it is a pun that is a big question okay now uh, if i look into the word offense offense here uh, talks about the guilt, one thing. Now, if I just break the word, it breaks into off and fence. Wherein off is a preposition and fence uh, talks about the word. So, when I play with the word 
uh, in a sentence wherein the word tends to give you two different set of feelings thereby the word tends to become pun okay so uh, here the pun is by the use of the word offense i hope it's clear all right now let's come down to 34 it's pun then 35 36,000, Now in line number 40, like an old age savage arm. Um, so this is your, uh, you must be very familiar with it. That is a simile. Okay. So here we are comparing, we are talking about that uh, neighbor's uh, appearance to be very much similar to the early man, okay very raw very wild understood now let's come down to the very last two lines these lines are an example of enjambment now what is an enjambment that is a very uh, first question that everybody might be you know thinking about so enjambment is nothing but a continuation of a sentence without a pause, without a break, okay, um, beyond the end of a line or a couplet or even a stanza, okay. Now, if I read this line and he likes having thought of it so well, he says again, good fences make good neighbors. So now in these two sentences, did you find any pause? Did you find any break? Did you find um, some full stop or something like that? There wasn't anything in between, isn't it? It went on going and going and going. Okay, till it reached good neighbors and then there is a stop. So now such sentences, when there is a continuation of a sentence without any pause or a break, that is an example of enjambment. Now this sentence, good fences make good neighbors. This is also, you can say, uh, it has been repeated twice in this whole poem, isn't it? One you can find here, he only says good fences make good neighbors and then again the same line here towards the end. So this can be also called repetition. Then it can, uh, why it is repeated? It is maybe repeated due to give, due to, uh, you know, due to, to add that flavor of musical effect in the poem. All right. So that is how this whole poem is, uh, you know, it goes on. Now, um, there is, I think there is an amalgamation of many poetic devices. So by, by end of this uh, poem, I think everybody has understood what is an assonance, what is a consonance, um, what is an enjambment then you have you might have noted down the examples for alliteration metaphor then uh, that personification then there was uh, symbolic by the word fence then there was pun by the word offense then what else did i talk about um yeah i spoke about parallelism also so that repetition of the word to each in the starting of the sentence and towards the end of a sentence. So these many were the poetic devices which I came across in this poem. And I believe my children have also noted down. And uh, if you still have any queries, you can definitely come back to me. You can text me. Um, so uh, that's all about this lovely poem mending wall let me again share you the beautiful picture which i tried to you know get through okay i'll just show you how these two people one of them was a poet and the other was his neighbor who, you know, used to meet every spring. 
and look at this how they are opposite to each other and this person his neighbor looks like an early man so much savage isn't it and look at look at our uh, poet so this is how you know he was talking about his appearance using a simile like uh, like a savage like an old savage whatever okay so uh, this is what is symbolic the fence the wall okay so that was it a lovely poem written by none other than robert frost and i'm sure my children have understood very well okay so uh, in my i have already shared a ppt in which i have discussed all the question answers please go through it and write it in a very legible handwriting in your literature notebooks okay until then stay blessed take care i'll meet you again with yet new chapter okay thank you and jai hind